Do you guys ever wonder what happens when you receive a phishing email, you click on the link and you type in a username and password, right? Have you ever actually thought about what that looks like from the attacker perspective? Well, I wanna, I wanna talk about that today. I wanna kind of show you guys what that really does look like and try to demystify uh, you know, some of the, the magic that is hacking. So let's, uh, let's just dive right in. You know, I don't wanna make these videos uh, too long, but we do have a few items here on the agenda. Um, first off, I think it's important for us to even talk about why this matters and, and what we're doing. Um, secondly, we want to show the attack, right, from probably the perspective you're used to seeing if you've ever fallen victim to a phishing email before. I want to show you what the attacker sees, because that's probably the really cool stuff that no one's ever seen before if you haven't really dabbled in the art of hacking. And then finally, we'll talk about how can we actually protect ourselves from these attack attacks, whether or not we're, you know, personal, uh, trying to protect our personal life or if we're trying to protect a, a business that we work with. So yeah, let's dive in. So here on the right, we have a Windows 10 machine that's running Outlook. We're logged in here as Michael Scott, who is the regional manager at Dunder Mifflin, and looks like he received a phishing email. But before we dive right into that, um, over in the left, top left corner, we're looking at a Kelly Linux machine. Um, and at the moment, it's just monitoring for anything new that's coming into a loot.txt file. And that'll make more sense later. But you know, just kind of want to set the stage here so you kind of understand what you're looking at at the screen. So the top left is going to be the attack perspective. There's going to be the hacker, the bad guy. And then the bottom right is going to be, you know, the, the actual victim of the attack who falls victim to opening this phishing email, interacting with it, and getting his credentials stolen. Unrecognized sign-in attempt. Um, obviously, that's, that's a big deal, right? We don't want someone getting access to our account without our permission. Um, it looks like LinkedIn wants us to go ahead and click on this link and sign in to verify that we own that account. So yeah, I mean, I'm in a hurry. I don't got time to deal with hackers. Let's just uh, let's just do it. Yeah, man, this is totally LinkedIn. Um, well, cool. Let me just go ahead and get get logged in with uh, my M Scott at Dunder Mifflin account, and then my password here of uh, Super Secure. I think that's what I use for LinkedIn. Let's try it. Whoa, invalid. You guys catch it? up there in the Kali Linux box. Look in the top left corner. So we've got a bunch of content there. Let's go take a look at it. So we dive in, we first notice we have the session key, mscottdundermifflin.com. Further down, we have a ses session password of super secure. Well, hey, that's exactly what I just typed in. That's crazy, you know, but as Michael Scott, let's go back to being a victim for a sec. And uh, we obviously didn't get logged into our LinkedIn account. Must have, must have done something wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring the Kelly image to the front. And as Michael Scott, I'm gonna try to sign in again. But I probably use my, uh, you know, I probably use the wrong password. So I'm gonna use the other password I like to use, which is password one, two, three. And we'll see if maybe that lets me in. Hmm, that didn't work. And I keep going, right? As, uh, as, as Michael Scott, I might try, you know, what about the password I use for Facebook? What about the password I use for my bank account? Like, I don't remember which password this is, but maybe I have a few that I like to fall to as a go-to, right? Well, this is huge. This is exactly what attackers want you to do because it doesn't matter how many times you enter an incorrect password or even the correct password, you're never gonna get logged in because we're not actually on LinkedIn. And every time we type something, we get that information displayed here on the attack side, which is crazy, right? So what I might do as a as an attacker is I might take this password one two three or I might take super secure and then, yeah I'll go try to log into LinkedIn with those credentials see if that works for me but what if that doesn't work well maybe uh, maybe M Scott has an account on Facebook or maybe that is the email address that's tied to a Chase Bank account or an AT and T mobile account right so I can just start signing in I could take this password combination with that email combination and and go out and see if I can log into some other services that Michael Scott might use. Um, you know, but what if super secure was not a, a personal password to Michael? What if that's more of like a shared company password that multiple people in the company use? Well, maybe I could take other company Dunder Mifflin emails and try signing into LinkedIn with that password. 
I see that all the time where businesses will actually have shared accounts or like a shared common credential and they have multiple accounts across multiple different users that all use the same password. It makes their life easier to manage, but definitely makes an attacker's life easier to compromise. So this is a, a huge thing that I just kind of wanted to share because it's definitely something that hackers are thinking about. It's definitely kind of something that they're looking out for. Um, and if you guys are interested in understanding, you know, how we got this far, you know, how is it that when I type something in to that LinkedIn page, it shows up in loot.txt? I'd be happy to show you guys that in, in another video. Um, feel free to comment or hit that like button if you think that's something you want to see. Um, but for now, what I want to focus in on is how can we prevent this from happening? Um, if we go back to our, our Windows machine, obviously we're not on LinkedIn, right? Let's close this down. Let's talk about some of the red flags. How could we have protected ourselves here from this attack? Well, the very, very first thing that I always typically recommend looking at is the sending address when you receive them an email that just doesn't seem legitimate, right? So if we look at this, it obviously is showing that we've got a LinkedIn administrator message coming from a gmail.com address. A legitimate communication would never originate out of, out of a Gmail if it came from LinkedIn, at least not like a legitimate user at LinkedIn. So that's a huge red flag, right? The other thing to notice is we've got L1NKED, right? Just trying to, to make it look close enough so that way if you're in a hurry, you might ignore that and overlook it. So the sender address is always a huge thing to look for. The other piece here is even though they said they tried to get around that, right? Because they tried to put a, a from security no reply at linkedin.com. Now, obviously, that's not how the from address feature works. But if you're in a hurry, you might just look at this and not look at the top and move on. Now, with that said, uh, attackers are getting really, really, really um, sophisticated. And I'm seeing more and more where they're able to successfully spoof this field where it looks like the email came from maybe the actual security to reply at linkedin.com. And there's things people can do on a technical level to try to prevent that type of spoofing. Um, but as an individual who receives these spoofed emails, one of the, the easiest or I guess the best ways to try to verify where the email actually came from, if you open that guy up, we can actually come into the file and then we can look at the properties of the message. And then we have uh, what's called the internet headers or also known as email headers of the message. And we can just kind of dive through these and yeah, they can be pretty technical. So feel free to send that off to your IT folks if you know this seems a little bit out of your comfort zone. But the key things that we're looking at is we can see things such as like what mail servers did it hit and go through? What was the sender IP address for the message? And then in here, we should also be able to see what the actual from address is. We see here, we have a from Google. So this tells us, yeah, this came out of a Google server, kind of tied to Gmail, right? So we could dive into this, gain a bunch of details and a bunch of information about where that message really came from. And I, I would suggest you do that if you're ever in doubt. But for now, we'll move on, look at a few other red flags that I noticed. So obviously we have the link here and we have a display text that says linkedin.com slash sign in. And if you're in a hurry, you might just trust it and click right through. But one thing I want to point out is not just Outlook doing this, but uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, or any other modern application. They have this feature where if you hover over the link before clicking on it, you can actually see where it is that that link is taking you. So even though the text says it takes you to linkedin.com, we can very clearly see that this is going to one ink and dot biz, right? That's, that's not gonna be LinkedIn. Um, so that's a huge thing to look at before you click. Um, I mean, so those are a couple things in the email message itself, but let's go ahead and dive further. Let's take a look at the web page um, and see if maybe we have any red flags here. So we kind of already talked about this, right? The one ink and dot biz, but um, the other thing I wanna point out and yeah, I'm using a, uh, I'm using a, a browser called Edge, which isn't quite as modern. I mean, it's modern, but it's not uh, as feature rich as Chrome or Firefox um, in the sense that if you're in one of those browsers and you're, you're on a website, um, a lot of the times it'll say something like secure or not secure. And what that's talking about is it's talking about the use of HTTP um, or HTTPS for secure. And really what that S does is it just means that your connection from your web browser to 
the web server that's hosting that website is encrypted, um, which is awesome. That That's great. We actually do want that. We need that. Um, that way, if anybody's kind of snooping in on the line, they won't be able to see what it is that, that you're doing or be able to retrieve the clear text credentials that you enter into these fields. Um, but with that said, just because it has HTTPS, that doesn't mean that everything on the website itself is actually trustworthy or that it's a legitimate secure web page. It just means that that connection is encrypted. And so I guess my point in bringing that up is if you're ever on a website that's asking you to sign in, any legitimate real communication should be done over HTTPS always. Now that we're in 2020, that's just kind of the standard. So if you ever are on a web page and it doesn't have that, you need to click away, especially if it's asking you to share anything that could be sensitive. On the flip side, just because it has HTTPS, that doesn't mean you can assume that it's completely safe and secure. Um, you want to continue to be on the lookout for other red flags as well. But if it doesn't have HTTPS, move on right away. So that's one thing I wanted to chat about. Another thing that I love to bring up, and I think this one's actually a really, really cool point that a lot of people overlook, is the copyright year right here in the footer. So hackers, a lot of the times, they're they're not necessarily always sophisticated. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's some guys out there that really, really know what they're doing. Um, but there's also a lot of people out there who don't really understand how a phishing website works, but maybe they just spent some time looking up and following a tutorial on how to create a phishing web page, or maybe they went out and they paid someone who knows how to make it work, and now they have their own phishing website that they can run their scams out of. But for those that don't actually understand the underlying technology, they don't necessarily do a great job at maintaining the website. So if the LinkedIn logo changes, or if the sign-in page on LinkedIn changes, such as if the copyright year goes from 2019 to 2020, that might be something that the attackers fail to keep up with. Um, and so that's something that we can be on the lookout for is seeing if things are outdated. Do we have a broken image? Do we have an outdated number, right? Those type of things are, are huge red flags to always be on the lookout for. Finally, grammar and punctuation mistakes. Now, I will admit that's coming harder and harder to come by um, as attacks get more and more sophisticated. But one thing to keep in mind is not all hackers speak English as their primary language. And so if they're targeting someone who does speak English as their primary language, they might have to be, you know, they might have to hire a translator or they might use Google Translate to try and produce their, their content. Um, and that doesn't always do the best job. So being on the lookout for that can sometimes also kind of tip you off on whether or not this is a legitimate thing. So, I mean, I doctored this one and I showed, <laughs> right, you dated instead of updated, uh, just to kind of bring this up as a point to talk about. But again, that's probably gonna be harder to come by um, just because people are getting smarter and they're getting better. So anyway, this is kind of everything I wanted to chat about. These are all the red flags that I saw. You guys see anything else that maybe I missed? Let me know. Put that down in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Um, I'm going to be doing all kinds of content like this. I want to I want to show you guys what happens whether or not you sign into a page, right? Like what happens if you just click a link and and nothing happens, and so you close it and you move on. That means nothing happened, right? You're probably safe. No, no, there might have been something that went on in the background. I want to show you guys that. Um, I want to show you what happens if you hit enable editing on a, on a Word document, or maybe you enable macros in an Excel document, right? Why is that bad? We're all told to watch out for that, but I want to show you why. Um, so yeah, please do consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing that. I think one of the next videos I will publish is going to be how to actually create the phishing website that you're looking at here. So if you're more technically inclined and you want to understand how to actually do that yourself, um, definitely stay tuned. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope uh, hope you had a great time. Thanks.